Hey Sarkatarians, what's up? It's Jess. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is another uh, episode of Cocktails and Cosmetics, and this time we will be featuring the Bourbon Sour. What is that you say? You've heard of an Amaretto Sour and a Whiskey Sour, but you've never heard of a Bourbon Sour? I guess you can make anything into a sour, but this is quite delicious, and I'm going to show you how to make it right now. Okay guys, so for this particular drink, you're gonna need one ounce of limes, an ounce of cranberry juice, an ounce of triple sec, and not one, but two ounces of bourbon. So I'm gonna take my shaker here. It already has uh, ice in it. And I'm gonna start, I have my fresh squeezed lime juice already in here, so I'm gonna throw that in there. One ounce of triple sec and two ounces of your favorite bourbon. I'm going to give it a good shake. I'm going to grab my glass. It has a couple ice cubes in it because I like to keep it nice and cold. And of course a little lime wedge. There you go, folks. It is a beautiful bourbon sour. Go slow on these because they're quite tasty. And that's three shots of uh, alcohol that you just put in there. Huzzah! All right, so hope I hope <laughs> that it sparks your interest. This is quite a tasty concoction. I got the recipe off of the Endless Meal. I did a search for bourbon sour recipes and this was the one that sounded the most interesting because it had the cranberry juice and the lime juice in it. You don't even need sour mix. I think it makes it nice and tart. It's refreshing, but just remember there's three shots of alcohol in it. So sip these very slowly. Um, it's a nice refreshing drink for the summertime. I'm enjoying these. Um, so yeah. I did one once before. Hopefully you caught that. That was the Texas Ranch Water uh, beverage. If you did not see that, I will link it up here. Check it out. I'm enjoying these. I think these are fun, especially for the summer, but I also plan on finding some different warmer, like hot toddy kind of recipes, things that would be nice during the winter too and the fall. So, you know, I'm here for you. If you enjoy talking about cosmetics, talking about cocktails, learning new concoctions and things like that, um, I'm here for you. If you're into this kind of thing, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Give me a little subscribe and love and hit the notifications so you know when I upload new content. I try to upload at least once a week, generally on the weekend, sometimes Monday. This will probably go up on a Monday. Um, Cause you know, I, who wants to watch me drink a bourbon at 10 o'clock in the morning while you're drinking coffee? I think that's kind of weird. So these kind of things I'll put up around eight o'clock at night. How did I come up with a bourbon sour? I didn't really, but uh, if you know me at all, I enjoy the Bravo tier, uh, TV channel quite a bit. Um, most of the Housewives franchise I enjoy. Matt and I watch Below Deck, and occasionally I will watch Southern Charm, the original one from South Carolina. And one of the characters' mothers has a butler named Michael, I believe, who is known for his beverages. And this was one, his actually looked kind of slushy. Um, so I don't know if it was or not, but I thought that sounded interesting. That sounded perfect for cocktails and cosmetics. So I gave it a try and it is delicious. And refreshing. I like the tartness of the cranberry and the lime together. Like I say, you don't need sour mix. You just use that. It's not too sweet. It's nice and tart and refreshing. And remember, there are three shots of alcohol in it. So go slow. Um, today we're just going to be chatting. It's like going to a bar, hanging out with a friend at a bar and talking about makeup the whole time. So I'm here for it. I hope you are too. I am, the only thing I have on my face right now is my foundation. I just did a review. This will actually be coming up next weekend on the, what is it? Where is it? The NYX Born to Glow Foundation. Um, I haven't seen much about it, so I thought I'd give it a whirl and this is what's on my face. Everything else that I use, um, I will kind of describe. I've gotten a few new things from Ulta, a couple orders that I've gotten. Some things that I really like, not 100%, but I'll give you the pros and cons of that while I put some makeup on, we can chat about things. Yeah. 
So I've had this on my face for a couple hours. It is warm out, but it is kind of a tackier foundation, so I am gonna powder. Um, but what I have not done yet is my concealer. Like I said, I have not done much of anything. So I am using two concealers right now. My Pacifica Liquid Cover uh, Mineral Concealer, and this I picked up, this is from Revolution Pro. I don't know if it has a specific name or not, but it's one of their new concealers. The packaging, I love. I think it's fantastic. Um, the formula of the concealer itself, I love as well. However, the functionality of the packaging sucks huge. I believe it's $9 um, at Ulta, and um, it's a drier formula. It's a thinner formula. I'm going to start putting on my Pacifica. What I like to do, because this is such a moisturizing, um, creamy concealer, I like to use this in conjunction with my Pacifica. So the problem with this is it's a brush tip applicator. Okay, that's all well and good. There's a little button here at the bottom that you push up. Now the thing with this is I can't tell when the product is actually coming up. I click it a couple times, I shake it, look for anything that, oh, there we go, might be coming out. Like I said, it's very thin. But then it, like, if you're not paying attention, it just kind of goes all over the place and it's just a waste of makeup. So, um, see, it's, look, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like bubbling out on the side here. I'm not going to use all that. I don't need all that. But that's annoying. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe that on my hand. I'm just going to put a, a couple little dots on here. What I do like about it, like I said, I like the formula. It's nice and thin. It is very, very brightening. I believe they only have three shades. This is the almond shade, and it's really, really light. And it's probably good enough for fair, but this is one of the middle colors, one of the middle shades. So I just kind of tap these in together with my finger, then go in with my brush. This is an Eco Tools, like a 360 brush, which I really like because I feel like it just kind of pushes the concealer into my under eye bags and creases as opposed to wiping it off but I think this does a really good job as far as brightening the under eye it doesn't crease as much um, I think the combination of the two really kind of complement each other but again that packaging what I wish they would have done was instead of a brush tip kind of use a sponge tip and I think that you can kind of control the amount that comes out a lot easier than with this particular tip. I think it looks nice, but the functionality of it is terrible. All of these products I will link in the description box as well as, you know, as I'm discussing the ones that I'm featuring anyway. Anything that I don't mention, I will link in the description box. Whew, I'm getting toasty. Must be time for another sip. Another thing that I've gotten recently that I really like, this is the Catrice Triangle Artist Contour Stick in warm brown. I took this with me on, to the beach and I really liked it. Um, this is another thing where I like the product itself. I don't know if I like the functionality of the actual um, packaging. Um, I like the color a lot. I think it blends really well. The only thing is it's really soft right now. Like I don't think that I would like turn this up and then apply it from the package, from the stick itself. So I usually go in with my finger and kind of tap it on here. But I really, really like the color. It says it's a warm brown, but I feel it's cooler than some of the other things that I use. I do like a cooler brown for contouring, if you can tell. I think that looks a little more cool than it is warm or gold you know like a golden like a bronze color i just kind of tap this in this is another eco tools tool it's so hard to say eco tools brush it's really packed um with the bristles and then i just kind of buff it in a little bit and you see how quickly that disappears i mean it just it looks nice i don't find it i think for whatever reason this side of my face is patchier tends to blend things a little patchier than the other side. It could just be my face. I could just have one of those weird faces. But um, it just blends in so easily. So again, and again, 
I don't know if my, I guess my package is kind of faulty because I'll turn up the product and it won't come back down. And then when I put the lid on it, it uh, smears and gets stuck and it's kind of gross. So and I, I find, especially with this warmer weather, that it definitely is very soft and super creamy. And the other, the other problem with that that I've run into is like I don't, I don't feel that it stays on quite as long as it would if it weren't, if it were more of a drier formula. But it just disappears so nicely, blends in so seamlessly. And I do like it. Again, there's, uh, it's a hit and a miss, um, but I will definitely keep using it. Maybe they will work on the packaging and get the functionality of it uh, going a little better. One more cream product before I put powder on. I definitely need to put some powder on because I am getting uh, damp. Uh, in that case, let's have a little sip of beverage. I'm getting damp between my boobs too. <coughs> All right, I picked these guys up when they first came out. These are the ColourPop blush and light sticks. I got the Poppy collection, and I really, really, I love, I love the blushes. Uh, the two blushes are Aloha, which is this one. Actually, this is a little bit more of a neutral kind of color, and then the other one is Under Pressure which is a little bit brighter, definitely a little bit more of like a poppy color as opposed to this. I, I tend to use this one a little bit more than the, the brighter one, but I think I'm gonna go bright today. Then the other the thing that comes with three pack is the um, light sticks. This is in the color Bullseye. And this is kind of a gold color, but it's super shimmery. It's super pretty. Let's see if I can do a better job at swatching than I do in the, look at how, whoa. Man, that picks up so nice. The only problem with this, it blends out really nicely and just has a really nice glow to it. I thought it would be too dark for my skin, but it really isn't. The only problem with it, and I don't think it'll pick up on camera, but after a while, once it kind of um, smooths out a little bit, is that our, there's residual flecks of glitter. <laughs> so my problem was I had it you know, on my face. I don't mind glitter up on my face, but I had it on my nose and on my chin the one day, and I was looking in the mirror, I'm like, where'd the glitter come from? And I realized it's the residual from the highlighter. So I like the highlighter. Again, I don't mind the glitter on, on my cheekbones, but getting down in my chin and on my nose, it was a, it was a little weird. So take that as you will. Uh, but as far as these go, I like to just get a little bit on my finger and then get a little smile, tap it on my cheeks. And it's just a really pretty, pretty pop of color. It blends out really nicely, really easily. These are sold separately, or like I, you can get the three packs. I, I think the three packs are 25. I will put the price down below. Um, but I like these. I'm liking cream blushes a lot more anymore. I feel like these stay on my face. Uh, the longevity of these are nice. Um, I do have some powders that I really like. They're pretty much the same kind of color, but see how easily it is to blend. You can also put it on your sponge or on your brush and apply it that way. But I feel like using my fingers, I have a little bit more control. Now I'm going to take a break here for a second. I'm going to powder my face because I definitely need that. Uh, it's not something I normally do very often. I do a little bit more in the summertime and this Foundation is much more dewy than what I've been using lately. So it definitely needs to be powdered. It feels a little sticky So I'm gonna do that and be back in just a second. All right, so I am back. I am I Did uh, some powder. I did my eyebrows. I'm using this wet and wild like the singles brulee and it's I dropped it a few weeks ago and I'm trying like crazy to Keep it from uh, not breaking anymore and I just did so I am interested in um, trying to find another show since Game of Thrones is obviously over and that was such a big um, 
big thing for me and Matt. We enjoy watching new shows and, you know, series and things. We started watching Big Little Lies. We watched the whole first season. We watched the first episode of the second season. And I'm still trying to figure out why I care about any of these people. I don't. I'm not even sure why I keep watching it. <laughs> the last episode of the first season, I kind of felt like maybe some of them had some kind of redeeming qualities. They were almost human. And then it started up again and they were the same, like, just nasty, mean bitches from the beginning. I like the kids. The soundtrack is killer. But I don't really care about any of the characters. And that I need to be able to connect. I need to be able to connect with people to really want to watch a show. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I heard Chernobyl was very good. I feel like it would be depressing as hell, but I don't think it'd be any more depressing than this one. So please let me know. Any suggestions would be helpful at this point. I appreciate it. And as far as series, I just finished watching, I guess, uh, Beverly Hills Housewives are over. New York Housewives are over. Potomac's still going on. And I think think uh, Orange County starting up soon. And I still dislike the fact that I like these shows so much. Matt wonders why I watch them. I really don't have an answer. It's mindless. I have to think enough at work. I have to talk to people enough at work. It just kind of shuts my brain down. So I use this in my last video. If you haven't seen it, I again will link it above. Um, it was kind of an epic fail, and I 100% admit to that and uh, own it and accept it, but watching it back, it's really funny how I really liked what I did with it. Um, I liked, it's one of my favorite um, videos that I've done so far. I think because my editing is getting a little bit better, I feel like I have a better idea of what I'm doing and I'm okay to make, I'm okay making mistakes. I don't mind making mistakes. It was a fail. I was inspired by something and um, did not go according to plan. And instead of trashing it and redoing it, I said, screw it. I'm, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to accept it for what it is. And um, it is up there. And if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. It's a, it's an eye tutorial um, gone wrong, gone way south. And um, I'm okay with that. So uh, give it a look-see. But I used the Swear By It palette, the NYX Swear By It palette. I'm just going to use like a little, I'm just going to do a very light eye look this time. Um, this one color, though, really shocked the crap out of me. I was playing around with it. It's this one here. This, which looks really kind of blue, like... Um, I don't even know, like an electric blue kind of thing. And then when you swatch it, here's the crazy thing. It's a duochrome and um, it's almost like a purpley brown color and you hardly see any of that blue in there. It is, I mean, you, you see it here. It's really cool. But when you swatch, well, there's some a little bit. I guess if you pack it on a little bit more, you see that blue. I kind of want to use that color at some point. It's not going to happen today, but ha, huh, that's such a cool color. They're pigmented really well. There's 40 shades in here and they're $35. So you're obviously paying less than a dollar per pan. And for the most part, they've, um, they've worked pretty well for me. I've used them a couple times. The last time I used it though, it was kind of strange because I did get a reaction at the end of the day. I had mentioned I had gotten a reaction from um, one of my other palettes that I ended up, uh, it wasn't a NYX, it was a Makeup Revolution palette that I ended up having to get rid of, which was really sad because I really liked it. I was able to get a, a couple really cute looks out of it. Um, but it just, I had too many reactions too many times. I think it has to do with uh, some of the red colors. I'm guessing. Although, I did a purple look one time and I ended up getting a reaction to that too. Maybe because there's red in it. But it just bummed me out. And again, it was at the end of the day that I noticed it. The same, same with this. But I had used a lot more warmer, col warmer colors. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. I'm just going to go in with like a cool neutral look. Doesn't really make sense because I can't even really see my blush right now. Maybe I powdered it off. I'm going to add a little bit more at some point here. I'm going to go in with like cool kind of rosy colors. 
See any good movies lately out in the theater? We're going to go see Lion King this weekend. Or probably by the time that I put this up, we will have seen Lion King. I am super stoked about it. I've heard that it doesn't have as much heart as the original one, the animated one. But I'll tell you what, I, I'm PMSing right now. I'll probably be crying through the entire thing. I remember when it first came out, when the original, the animated ones came out. That's when Disney was kind of doing their redo. They had um, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and I think, I guess Lion King was afterwards. But they would have the preview of the, a big long preview at the, the movie prior. So I remember my mom and I went to see Aladdin. And then they had the whole intro of the Lion King and the circle of life and, you know, all the animals coming up and seeing it. And I just remember both of us being like, <laughs> just kind of crying about it and like, oh my God, I can't wait till this comes out. Cause I think they would come out like around Thanksgiving time. And uh, we were so excited. And then of course, the movie came out and I went to see it and I cried during that. My mom and I went to see it on Broadway uh, in New York and I cried during that. It was the same thing. It was the circle of life, the beginning when all the animals are coming up to pay homage to the new king or the new prince. And the costumes for that were absolutely brilliant. Uh, I think it's still playing. I would assume Disney would uh, definitely keep that going if it's not, especially now that the movie's coming out. And um, it was just, I mean, the thought that went into it, how do you make somebody look like an animal? Like you couldn't even really see the person. You didn't, you forgot that they were there and that it was a costume. It honestly got your mind into thinking that um, it was an animal in the theater on Broadway. And one of my favorite, favorite parts, I knew I could kind of see how they were piecing it together and how it was gonna work, but it still didn't even really hit me until it happened. It's after Mufasa is dead and <clears throat> Simba goes like, uh, I think Rafiki whacks him on the head and runs and he like runs into this uh, tree or whatever and he comes out and there's a pool of water there. And he looks into the water and he's like, he sees Mufasa kind of for a second. And then the winds kind of swirl around and the clouds come together and you see, I'm getting a little teary just talking about it. Oh my God. And he comes out and he's just like, you are the true king. Remember where you came from. Just remember. And I remember seeing this on Broadway and it was like these, <clears throat> it was dark and like these shapes that kind of look like clouds and then the lights changed on them and it was dark and there were these little green like lasery kind of things and all these parts started kind of twirling around and they come into this face that's Mufasa and I was just, I could see it coming. I knew what was going to happen and it still didn't quite prepare me for the real thing. And it was so cool and chill. So I, you know, Disney has this thing that they're not creating anything new. They're just making, um, taking what's old and making it new again. They're not doing anything brand new, but they're doing it with Mulan. I, they're doing another Maleficent live action. I'm okay with it. I, I, I don't really care, but this one got me. I'm like, I don't care. I'm excited. And I know it's going to be. You know, the thing with Maleficent was that they kind of took a story and put a twist on it, kind of put their own twist on it, which I really kind of liked. Cinderella was a little, a little different, but not quite. It was a little different. And um, this seems like it's going to be word for word, like the music's going to be exactly the same. And it's honestly the music that makes me cry more than anything, because doesn't it? It's music, man. It gets you. I remember in college, because it came out, I think, in 94. And a friend of mine and I both absolutely love The Lion King. And they had like um, a companion CD for it, which was so cool. Like the other music that was in the movie um, that was not on the original soundtrack, which I absolutely loved. I'm gonna go with this like sagey green coat. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I am super stoked for The Lion King. I love that James Earl Jones is doing it again. That makes me so happy. So freaking happy. And Donald Glover, I don't know if you guys ever watched Community when it was on NBC. Chevy Chase is on it. Um, but I thought he was, he was pretty funny. And then, of course, he was Lando Calrissian in the Han Solo movie. I thought he was pretty good with that. And his uh, 
music. Childish Gambino. I like him. I think he's pretty cool. Matt likes him too. All right, so you gotta get, I like that. I gotta get some liner on here. Last week when I was filming, we had, we were in the middle of a major heat wave. It was terrible. And it has finally calmed down a little bit and it's lovely. Out, it's warm, it's toasty, but I hate having the air conditioning on. So I think I am just gonna add a little bit more blush. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about, I did talk about in uh, the BoxyCharm, I think a little bit. Um, this is the Tardis Pro Glow Face Palette. I like it, got it in my first BoxyCharm pack. It has two blushes, two highlighters, and two bronzers, um, which I've used. I took it to the beach. Um, I used it as uh, eyeshadow. Um, and I really, really liked it. I like the Too Faced one, the Natural Face one that I have, but this I think is just divine. I feel like the contour has come off a little bit already. Maybe it rubbed off with my powder. So staying power on that isn't necessarily the best, but I was a little damp, I was a little sweaty, so probably wasn't the best time to put on uh, a cream product. That's probably why the blush came off as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a bronzer to my face. Got dark in here, man. Where'd the sun go? What are you guys doing? What'd you guys do this weekend? Anything good? Go out, take advantage of the wonderful weather if you had it. It's going to pop a little blush on, but I did that twice already. I'm going to go in with this little kind of champagne-y color here, and I'm just going to use my finger and put that on as my highlight i like using this um with my finger most highlighters with my finger a little better i feel like it kind of presses it in and i don't have to worry so much about it emphasizing texture and then i bring it up a little bit on the brow bone here a little bit on my nose a little bit on couvre -vo. something for my lips make it easy oh the sun's back i thought it was maybe on just the other side of the house because that's where it was i'm gonna use a little bit of mac flick flick plus fix plus to set my makeup getting low man i actually got this in italy it was one of my italy purchases i went to a mac store and i got this and some kind of like ion charged facial spray water, which I still have that too, but oh, one of my, one of my souvenirs from Italy. Um, and then finally for my lips, I don't, I always forget lips. I always forget to show you my fixing spray and my lip color. This is an oldie, but a goodie. This is, um, the Revlon HD gel lipstick. Um, this is in the HD desert, mm, HD desert. And uh, I like these, they're super light. They smell like kind of fruit punchy. Give a nice little subtle color to the lips. I feel really nice, almost feel like a lip balm, a little bit closer to a gloss. Like the L'Oreal Shine Reach, which I really like. Reach, Shine Reach. Um, ooh, look at that glow, I like it. Tart, mm -hmm. <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> All right, and as you can see, I'm getting down to the bottom of it here. But uh, yeah, this is delicious. I would like another, but that I think will put me on the couch for the rest of the day. And I don't know that I wanna do that. So I'm gonna call it a day here. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I hope you enjoy the recipe. I hope you enjoy these. Again, give this a thumbs up if this is something that you enjoy. Talking about beverages, talking specifically about makeup. I still can't get over this glow. Mm, I love it. Leave a comment. Say hi. You know, some of the things we discussed. Uh, let me know what you think. Again, if you tried this drink or you tried the Texas Ranch Water, let me know what you think about it. And um, again, subscribe because I will be doing more of these. And I do have my NYX foundation review coming up next week. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.
Cheers, my Snarkatarians.